All right, y'all, it's time to save some saves. You know, we're just going to ride out there onto the ranch full of saves that need saving, and uh, we're just going to save them there today. We're, you know, just going to herd them up like cattle and take them out to you know, wherever they need to be, and, you know, that'll just be that, right? We'll just, we'll just take care of this business here, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Hope you are, too. Gonna be a gonna be a ride off into the sunset. You understand? You understand? How do I even see with these things on? I can't. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, <laughs> uh, I lost it. It's not coming back. We're saving saves today. You've submitted your saves in the subscriber section of the Discord, and we are about to try and save them. We've adopted a Western theme for absolutely no reason at all. Every good party needs a theme. First, Jake the Young One at Nia Salamina Famagusta. Doing a build a nation save in Cyprus. And I'm struggling to beat the big teams and reach Europe. I also struggle to find players who are good enough as finances are on the poor side. So we are in Cyprus. I would say you're struggling to beat the big teams and get into like Champions League group stages. Okay. Maybe setting the goal a little too high at least at this point. But I see you are currently in fifth, third, and fourth. The first thing you need to check to figure out what type of gap you are trying to cover is you go to competitions, stats, and team detail. This will only be available after the first competitive game of the season. You go all the way down to the bottom, and there you will find salary per year. And you see you're spending 1.88 million on salary. Well, the top team spending 4.55 million. This might feel like something that is completely insurmountable. It's not. In my Austria save, I'm going up against a Salzburg team that's spending like 20 times what I'm spending. So the fact that they're only spending like two, maybe three times as much as you're spending is a pretty good sign and makes this gap something that you should be able to cover. I see you're also managing the Cypriot national team, but we're just going to ignore that. Your wages are pretty depressed, right? I have my wages in per year and 1.8 million is not a lot, but the quality you have in this, you know, this guy in particular, your highest paid player is pretty good. Your goalkeeper is pretty good. Like these are decently talented players. But before you worry about anything in Europe, this is all about gaining supremacy in your domestic league. You're not going to build Cyprus into a world power with dynamic youth rating if you are not leading the charge for Cyprus. So one crisis at a time. Financially, obviously, you're not absolutely lighting things up. You have a $967 transfer budget and your balance has gone from being close to negative 10 million to actually climbing up into a positive position where you are financially okay. So congratulations on that. And you have a significant amount of free wage budget. You have a wage budget that could be eaten up two times over by your highest paid player, which means you could sign two more of that guy. So I don't necessarily think you're doing everything you can financially at this point. So your scouting is actually kind of weird. You have a couple of scouts that are not scouting for anything. You're looking for is at most 21 years old and nothing else, right? Which they're just kind of defaulting to looking for players they think would help your team. You are not in any one of your scouting reports that I have seen looking for somebody specifically that is going to be able to help your team now. You do have a couple of scouts that are going very broad, and I'm talking one in Europe and one in South America. America that are just looking for star potential that is like I said broad and you're asking a lot of your scouts but they are turning back reports and so that's not necessarily the worst thing in the world if you're having issues with the finances behind those reports you can adjust the transfer budget that's expected uh, right now you have 1k available so they're not exactly going to be able to provide a lot of players when you have 1k available in your transfer budget, it is not as wise to be looking for wonder kids in Europe and South America that you're going to be able to bring in because you have a decently talented team, which means players that have star potential and are essentially free, they're not going to be super easy to find. So you're either gonna find players that are too expensive, that are right on the fringe so that they can include in the scouting reports, or you're gonna find players that just aren't good enough. And when that happens, they won't show up in a scouting report at all. You need to refine your scouting for end of contract players from big leagues. Look, I don't sign people for actual real money until pretty late in saves when I'm trying to build my way up to the top of a lower league. End of contracts from bigger leagues around you and loans. Do you need me to start singing? Cause I will start singing. Get along, little doggies, it's loan in time. You get the idea. You need to find senior affiliates. Sometimes this can be hard, even if you can't. You need to spend the time to go look in Greece, in Italy, in Germany, France, Spain, England at 
players and look for loan listed players look for young players that aren't being used and especially late in a transfer window you can often get those guys for free you just take that offer and just turn it to zero percent and then you have a shot, especially on deadline day. That whole deadline day feature, they're trying to get people off their team. You might be able to get them for free. So I'd recommend one scout scouring Europe for loan players that have, let's say, excellent current ability. And then you'd want one scout scouring whatever it is, Southeastern Europe, Eastern Europe, whatever fits your fancy for end of contract players or Europe for end of contract players. Since, you know, continental scouting, while a little slow, can play off the knowledge of, that they already have and... You're in an interesting spot because you still have a ways to go until you take control of your league. But I think the good side of that is that you don't really need to spend a lot of money, I think, to take control of the league. Just watch my stream save. I'm in a very similar position with Floridsdorfer where we are trying to climb up the league with essentially free transfers. That's on Twitch. The link is down in the description. Hey, it's Cowboy Zealand. It reminds you to hit the subscribe button because about half of you that watch these videos haven't done it, and we just really appreciate it if you're enjoying the videos. All right. What was that? <laughs> Next, we have Spot Time 06 at SC here in Veen. Here in Veen. Right. I'm in the 2026-27 season. I cannot break into the Europa League or Champions League. Have only been to the Conference League. Managed to get to the semifinals, which I lost narrowly to Arsenal over two legs. So I'm just wondering how I can gain any money to get into the top four, even as I have some good youngsters. Okay, words. Good youngsters, Javier Valderrama and Ivan Hernandez. I don't think I have the squad depth to beat teams like Ajax and Feyenoord to the title. All right, spot time. Let's take a look. Semifinals, the Conference League is good, but I see that you know over the course of this save, you've you bounced around the Arad de Vizi, and uh, I can understand your frustration at the time of submitting the save because you're sitting here, you're a little lower than you're accustomed to being, right? Slow start to the season, six matches, eight points. I, I think a base move here would be, let's just look at your team. Who are the best players on your team, right? You got three star players. Are these guys good enough to be contending with the teams you want to contend against? I mean, you already know you've got a great player in Ivan Hernandez. And I, I'm assuming that you've, you've got a couple of Colombians on your team. You know how to play this game. You are actually after my own heart. You are just signing Colombians. Now, that being said, even though this guy allegedly has great potential, this guy is not tremendous, right? He's huge and he's technically skilled. But if you start comparing these players to who you are going up against, who you are attempting to catch, well, like, let's go look at Ajax and hopefully you've got some scouting information on them, right? You can find like a uber talented Benjamin Sesco, who's just objectively better, right? Than the player that you have in that position or Yuri on Timber. Like this guy is just objectively better. These are the players that you are trying to catch. And while it can be daunting to look at that stuff, it's also nice to look at it as a reminder. In spite of the fact that you made it really deep into the conference league, I wouldn't even put you at the best of the rest at this point. I saw the board was mad at you for 4-1 loss to Utrecht. And that's not a team that you can be losing 4-1 to and expect to be pushing Ajax for the title. So how about overall squad composition? I see we're in a Wonder Kid hoarding phase, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but maybe selection of Wonder Kids has let you down. Like you were, you were, you seem to be a little deceived by the stars. This kid's good, but he's not great. Emmanuel Kwani is good. He's unflappable. He's a model citizen. He's a tremendous influence in the locker room, but he's not great. I would say the only regular starter on Ajax that you have on your team is probably Ivan Hernandez. This sort of guy wouldn't be a super regular starter for my Austrian team. Not to mention, if this is your main tactic, it's a little wild. Okay. Now, while it could absolutely be effective, this sort of smushing of the lines is not something that I've typically seen people have a lot of success with. Putting pressure on other teams is just a really good way to succeed in FM22, and it's been the same way in Football Manager for a couple of years. Not creating any pressure through the middle and then playing... You're, you're playing extremely wide, right? Extremely wide. These two hang back. Your, your wing back on both sides or in the channels all day long. Your winger is in the channel at least farther wide than that moha who's not on attack is over here i just don't think that i just don't think this is a very good tactic i don't think you're applying even pressure uh, i'm failing to see the logic behind I, 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 look your team 
building, you have a sense for. You know kind of the types of guys you want to sign. You've gone after young people. I know that your scouting is going to be good. It's going to be balanced. You're looking for wonder kids all over the world. But if you want to take a step, right, you need to start signing guys that are able to contribute now more. Because guys like this are good if you want to be in the Europa Conference League. But you need to start signing guys that can do more than that. Whether that's through loans, whether that's through spending this money, but you need to find one or two 23 to 28 year old guys that really elevate your team. And there's a couple of those bargains out there and full on wonder, wonder kid scouting all the time. It's going to take you a few years from now to actually realize your goals. And I'd say a lot of the guys that you have probably aren't going to be able to make it all the way there based off of, you know, based off the stuff I'm seeing. I don't think there are a lot of real stars. It's just guys that are good that are going to get better, but short term, switch one or two of your scouts to looking for transfers that fit your budget, say a transfer that maxes out at 6 million, which you can do, create assignment and then say, okay, I signed somebody for 7 million and I want their current ability relatable to my team to be superb. And we're looking in Central Europe or something. Start there and start building a database of players that are able to help now. You honestly haven't refined what potential ability you're looking for either, so I can imagine that that's not helping the scouting and I, you, a lot of your scouting reports are not coming back with a lot of players and so refining that and saying i'm looking for potential ability and the fact that you're you're looking for 19 everywhere 19 i do 23 i'm okay with like 21 22 but 19 is tough there aren't a ton of those players at that age that are playing super regularly yet that you can even spot them that and just fix this you need somebody that isn't deep lying in the midfield whether it's Mitsala, a box to box a center midfielder somebody you've got so much pressure on the wings that if valderrama's not scoring super regularly i don't know who the heck else is supposed to score here that's it for now that's the short term and then you you gotta get better players now you're a little too in love with the high potential stars and i can't believe i'm saying that what have you done to me spot you are you're in a good spot and you know how to play the game it's just taking it over to where you can get a good team on the field next it's cj tv at Wrexham. we got to the premier league i'm struggling on a few fronts firstly i can't seem to find a tactic as an underdog that works for my team in the slightest so i'm stuck with my current tactic which is absolutely more aggressive than i can be secondly my scouts just seem to bring up talents i can't really sign or offer a no upgrade to the team or they just have insane wage demands so i'm struggling as to what i did wrong on that front i've had to rely on free signings after release windows are done finally my youth intakes just seem to be gone awful despite promising golden generations i have no idea what i'm doing there i also can't ship out any players on my transfer list save my save i don't want to go down honestly it's cj sometimes you are just gonna go down but i feel like a lot of people are doing a rack some save this year so that's what we're gonna patch up i don't want to go down you are two matches in you're two matches into the season cj i'm here so i'll take a look this is not necessarily too aggressive ball winner deep lying playmaker in the midfield this is fine now positive may be a little bit too much and trying to go direct isn't a bad idea when you've got a nice crowd of players to play the ball to uh regrouping's fine i've seen people have success with this combination of instructions short distribution of the center backs is interesting lower defensive line i have rarely seen succeed at a high level if you get scared and start putting your defensive line low and we're not in the last five ten minutes of a game even then i've had some issues with it and i don't know if it's confirmation bias or not but that low defensive line invites a lot of pressure and with the the precision and deadly crossing in particular in football manager 22 it is dangerous to allow them the opportunity to pump a lot more of those into the box so getting your team farther up the field wouldn't be a bad idea particularly because you have such a deep lying midfield they're going to be able to cover things up so given all of that your main issue is that financially speaking if you look at what we looked at earlier in this video you are going to be swamped by every team in the premier league which means those wages might look ridiculous to you that is what players are expecting when they're coming into the Premier League. You, from what I can tell, have only utilized one of your four loan spots, and it's for 19-year-old Jack Thompson, who is good and reasonably at a Premier League level. He'll get better over the course of the season. You've got three more. Use them. You're in the Premier League. People will be tripping over themselves to get 
their players that type of playing time at a discounted rate. And trying to sign players in the Premier League is more difficult. This is the highest waged league in the world. England has really inflated wages, the Premier League most of all. It's just not something you're going to be able to combat. You're going to have to pay those inflated wages to bring the players into the team. Your youth players will start asking for a couple hundred thousand a year. Your strategy is not bad. Use all of your loans from ideally top level Premier League teams. I know somebody like Minamino, at least the beginning of the game, is available for loan. You can get really quality players that can be huge contributors early on from those top teams and end of contract signings. You don't necessarily have the money for anything else, but if you stay in the Premier League for a season, the financial windfall for your club is substantial. The longer you stay, the more your reputation goes up, the more your financial situation is going to go up. And honestly, after one season, I could see your scouting department expanding significantly. Or, oh my goodness. You have a lot of scouts already. Well, you need to apply these guys. Half of them aren't doing anything, dude. Send them somewhere. Oh, I'm worried about player recruitment. You are trying to find them. What are they going to find you? Like, you know, hello, I'd like to sign for Wrexham. Yes, Real Madrid called, but you're better. No, go find them. Next. It is Ethan's. Nothing tactic wise is working. I cannot seem to get this team, which were relegated from League One last season, back up into League One. I'm heading for the sack. Oh no. We must save Ethan's at once. Headed for the sack. So we are in League Two. Northampton Town is down in 20th. Whoa, this is not going well. You are in F and you are, you are, woo, baby. You are riding this line here you've got a lot of players loaned in so you have tried to apply the the loan theory and this is right after relegation that is freaking brutal you were relegated from league one and this is your first season trying to take hold of northampton so you are not in a good spot you know that you're in a rather devastatingly bad spot hmm there's nothing super wrong with your tactic uh no 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 there is don't worry, we'll get there. So you're throwing it out to the flanks. It'd be very hard for your goalkeeper to do. This is the, we'll do the small issues first, right? 12 throwing is actually solid from Liam Roberts, but I'd be willing to bet that the throwing the ball to the flanks hasn't been a great piece of goalkeeper distribution. Focusing play down the flanks can wear out your flank players if you've noticed them getting particularly tired. That is why if it's something that you've done all the time, you've obviously been plagued by injuries. You've got three guys in the starting lineup that are currently injured, which is not good. But let me tell you what, what the issue is. And I know that this is going to sound weird because you are in this situation. We go to squad. We look at the analysis report and we look at your team relative to the bet like the rest of this league. There is no way in hell that you should be in the bottom five in the league, right? If you've looked at these comparisons in the past, the fact that you are basically above average in the majority of attributes means that you should be one of the top three in the league. I mean, you, your team is not top three, but like top third of the league pretty comfortably. Your team has enough talent. You got scared. And I don't mean this in a bad way, Ethan's. I, I've done this before and you've got to learn this lesson the hard way. You cannot get scared. You can't. You got scared. These lines never work. They haven't worked for years. They don't work in Football Manager long term. They're there to kill off a game or for a very specific tactical adjustment where you are able to stymie a team because they can't cross the ball. They don't work long term at all. Playing narrow does. That does work on FM22. These lines will never work long term. They won't. Until the game changes, they will not. And in real life, this doesn't work as a long term plan. There is no team in the Premier League, including Norwich, who probably should do this, that does this every game. Even Burnley plays a more progressive style than this. And it's not just that, it's your in, it, it, it's your instructions as well. Anchorman, ball winner, on defend, both of them. You have one player on attack, and yet you say that you want to play positive. That puts your wing back and full back on support because they're an automatic. You have one player on attack. You need a winger and a midfielder, or maybe both of your wingers or something. You lost a couple of matches or got some bad results early on, and sometimes that happens. Sometimes you get unlucky, bounce of a ball, penalty kick, a corner goes in and your team's mentality fades away. And as you play the game more, you'll learn to recognize why those things happened and oh, we just don't have it today. In my Austria save, I let my team lose six to one and they went out and they got pasted. But we went in, I yelled at them and then I was constructive. I said, look guys, I believe in you. I went in, I, I have faith. I didn't change the tactic after we lost six to one because I liked the way that we played. And then at a certain point, our mentality went away. We won every match for the rest of that stream, every single one, because we 
we were able to flip the team's mentality around and we knew what we were doing was right. You got scared, you switched into a super defensive setup, and that is inviting teams to come forward and batter you, which is what they've done. You want to survive this? Do this. Go nuts. And it's going to feel suicidal it is but you got to do it so you 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 have to do it because you know what this ain't working and you can't go any further back go meet them on the field of battle and use the fact that your team isn't untalented to your advantage that and you're gonna have to turn the mentality of the team around which is hard but i'm talking team meeting look i'm gonna do this for you right now um you don't let your heads drop where is it we're good enough to turn things around. Boom, there you go. Exactly what we were looking for. A very happy on every single player. Automatically, you've used what I call the golden bullet and you have improved the morale of every single player in your locker room from unbelievably poor to aggressively below average. And that's an improvement you can work with. And then you take the time, you go in and you praise each player for their conduct. You say, thank you for carrying yourself in a positive light. That gives you another tick in the morale. And that's the sort of thing that makes them listen to you again and can make all the difference. Good luck. If you pull it off, it's one of those things that you can remember in Football Manager forever. Hey, I was almost fired, but then we came back from the brink. Next! All right, we have who's managing an international team. Norway. We've had some success, but Odegaard and Holland have been crucial to it. We just lost another, another European Championship final. Moment of silence for the homie. Quite frankly, it f***ed me off, so I haven't been able to play the save for a while. I don't want to win the European... I do want to win the European Championship before I retire the save, but it seems unlikely that Odegaard and Holland will be there in four years. However, it would be interesting to hear your take on who to focus on forward, because Norway hasn't been producing the best youth players. International management, you are beholden to what you are given, and you had the golden generation. You had Holland, you had Odegaard, you got the multiple European Championship finals, but unlike club management and football manager there is not a way to accomplish a feeling of inevitability because the competitions don't happen every year they happen every four years and so oh if we didn't win the champions league this year we're definitely going to win it eventually you can't say the same sort of thing when you are managing a national team that being said at 31 years old erling holland is still going to be good through the next cycle he's not going to be a ridiculously brilliant player at the next european championship but he will still be very good why because his natural fitness is 19. That's what affects player deterioration. So I really do think you've got one more shot at this. Now you won't have Iyer. That's for sure. He won't be there. And Odegaard's going to have to be one of those Ganch type players. But Erling Holland, the most important of all of them, will be there for the next cycle. You've got a center back that's coming up to replace Christopher Iyer. And you do have Asgir Haugstad. This is a striker you can work with in a sort of two striker system. Playing at a high level at Tottenham already. Everybody below like Evian and Ostegaard is going to be a relevant player even at the next European championship which means you're going to lose Odegaard and Iyer you've got that other center back who's going to be in the middle of his prime the next time you're coming up I feel like here I'm just kind of providing you some nice some counseling you're still going to be okay you still have talented players you just have one less world-class playmaker the way you can make up for that is athleticism athleticism and depth in a tournament where matches are coming very quickly can make up for that one very creative player but if you do find a good young creative force not kenneth hansen if you do find that good young creative force like this guy isak hansen arwin you need to slide him into the odegaard position and then try and find that next talented young player you're not out of it yet now once holland's gone then i think the save's probably done for you because you're just not going to get another player like that and you can't go out and sign one but you have one more cycle and Hansen Arwen is your next Odegaard he's the next creative force player you team him up with Erling Holland. you team him up with that young center back coming through and you have a chance so you can do this but also know that if you're not interested in the grind of surviving with the players that you already have then it would be time to call it a save once Holland's gone it's interesting we need more international management and football manager but at the same time it's kind of harder to to help out it's more about finding the players that are going to take that next step up in scouring scouring your national pool that and player searching for everybody that's norwegian so you can add them to your national pool oh i haven't done international management in a long time just look for 18 19 year olds with good passing good vision somebody that you can bring into the national fold early so by the time you get to the tournament they're very comfortable being in the team what a diverse interesting savior saves yeah i'll see you on another one my only hat